Today in the Spare Attack Room, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know about emulating all the awesome games you grew up playing. Now with this, you'll have the ability to play these games on whatever device you have, phone, tablet, or computer. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna to stick to Android devices. But the rules generally apply across the board. It's gonna be a bit of a journey. What I'm probably gonna to have to do is create an entire playlist for you to go through every single bit of it. But this is where it starts. What's up, my dude? Your friendly neighborhood Tony here, and welcome to the Spare Tech Room, where I try to channel the power of hyperfixation to help you make better tech choices. Now, like I said, this is probably gonna end up being an entire playlist going over step by step every bit of the process. And in today's video, I really just wanna get you started. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about video game emulation and how that works, and some of the keywords and phrases that you're gonna need to be aware of. Really think of this as emulation 101. Everything you need to know before you actually get started downloading emulators. I'll also break this video down chapter by chapter, so that way if you wanna skip ahead to a part, or if you need to go back and revisit something you totally can. Make sure you use that list that I link in the description box below in case you want to jump to other emulators. I'll be doing individual videos for all the big consoles, PlayStation 2, GameCube, Nintendo Switch, everything your heart desires. But first, we need to understand a little bit about game emulation and a couple of keywords. So if you're starting at zero, this is what you need to know. First off, What's an emulator? And really simple, an emulator is basically a program that pretends to be a video game console. So you're gonna have a ton of different emulators. Some of them will be emulators that pretend to be a Super Nintendo. Others will pretend to be a PlayStation 2 or a Nintendo Switch or an Xbox or whatever. There are a ton of different emulators and they are constantly being developed. And some are definitely better than others, but that's what I'm here for. So when you're thinking emulator, you're thinking console. Then of course you have ROMs. And a ROM is basically a file that is pretending to be a game. So you would take your ROM for something like Donkey Kong Country and play it on your Super Nintendo emulator. All right, pretty simple. You have emulators that are the consoles and ROMs that are the games. Then it starts to get a little tricky. So then you have things that are called BIOS files. And there are so many different types of BIOS files. But what a BIOS file is effectively is a key. It's a key that unlocks certain emulators. Now, not every emulator needs a BIOS file to run, but some will not play any games until you load the BIOS file first. Specifically, emulators for PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, they both require BIOS files. Other consoles like the Nintendo Switch require what are called product keys. And what I'll try to do is maybe post in the description box below all the different types of BIOS files that you might need. There's a ton of them and you definitely don't need them all. Some BIOS files, in fact, although you don't need them, you can use them to make your emulator more authentic. So for example, you can get a Game Boy BIOS file, and although you don't need that to play any Game Boy games, it'll create the kind of startup screen and animation for the Game Boy. So it just makes your experience a little more authentic. So emulators are the consoles, ROMs are the games, and BIOS files are the keys to play certain consoles. There's one other thing that we'll talk about today, and we'll really get into it a lot more in detail down the road, but that is something called a front end. Now, what a front end does, in short, is it takes all the different emulators that you have on your device, and it makes them all nice and neat and collected into one location. So instead of having to open up different programs to play different emulators and different games, you can have it all in one location where you can tab through your different emulators and all your different games and play them all pretty easily. And again, we're gonna get into that later on. That's not something we're gonna cover in this particular video. So, okay, you have the basics. You understand more or less what's needed when it comes to emulating games. So here's the first thing that you're gonna wanna do before you get started with downloading a bunch of emulators. And that is, you're gonna wanna build out your own ROM collection. Now. I can't tell you where to get ROM files. I can't tell you where to get BIOS files because there's a whole bunch of legal issues with that. But what I can tell you is that Google is your friend. And whenever I want to find a particular file, I just Google the name of the file. And sure enough, usually it shows up within the first couple links. So if you're looking for specific ROMs, specific games, or specific BIOS files, just Google it. But either way, the first thing you're gonna wanna do before you even get your device is you wanna go ahead and download and collect 
all of the different ROMs that you want to play. Then you'll take those and put each of them into their own individual folders. So I'll just get one folder, call it ROMs, and then inside that folder, I have several other folders for every single game console that I want to play games for. There's an NES folder for my Nintendo Entertainment System, and a PS1 folder, a PS2 folder, GBA for Game Boy Advance. Y you get the idea. So get all your files, all your ROMs and put them into their respective folders and just go ahead and start building that collection now. Now, one trap that you don't want to fall into is the trap of overdoing it. And I have definitely done this where you think I'm going to download every single game ever created and put them all into one hard drive. Now you can do that. Don't get me wrong, but it will hinder you from moving forward. So just for time's sake, what I would recommend is maybe just take your top 10 games for each of the video game consoles that you want to be able to play and put those into your files. Just start small and you can always add more down the road. Now, another thing I wanna recommend here as we're getting started and as you're building out your files and everything is whatever Android device you end up going with, hopefully it has a micro SD card slot in it. Now you can always put these games onto your internal storage, but that's generally pretty scarce. So you really wanna get a good micro SD card now. The one I have is pretty massive. It's a one terabyte micro SD card and you don't necessarily need to have something this big. You do wanna be cautious though to make sure that you're getting a reliable and fast micro SD card. So I'll link to the one that I recommend in the description box below. This thing has absolutely not failed me. It's been fantastic for running all kinds of games. So you can pick up a terabyte card if you wanna just future proof yourself and be set for the long haul or you can get something smaller. I wouldn't recommend with going with anything really smaller than 256 gigs. 512 is kind of the sweet spot, but get yourself basically the biggest card that you can afford. And the cool thing about having all of your games on one micro SD card is that you can then take those games and kind of transport them over to different devices. So if you end up upgrading down the road or if you have maybe a handheld system and a tablet and a phone and you wanna be able to just take your entire game library with you, get yourself a pretty solid SD card. All right, this about covers all the basics that you need to understand before we move forward with downloading emulators. Your homework is to get all those files and folders together and pick a solid SD card up. Next time in the Spare Tech Room, I'm gonna walk you through setting up the most important program there is when it comes to game emulation. This one app will let you play 80% of the games that you could ever want to play. If you're watching this in the future, I'll link to that video and playlist right over here. If you have any questions in the meantime, fire off in the comments below. And if you have any specific topics you want me to cover in the future, please let me know. Of course, I want to focus on things you actually want to know. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you next time in the spare tech room. Be good.